Hello, I'm Anika from Mage to Sew, and welcome to my Sewing for Beginners series. In this video, I'm going to be helping you to learn how to sew in a straight line, and I'm going to be sharing some tips and some tools with you that will make your life easier. Let's first start by looking at these tips and tools. Another little bit of feedback before we continue is to remember when you are sewing, if you have a lot of fabric, perhaps you're making a large garment, a large dress, home furnishing projects, they can be very big. You always want to make sure that you try and keep them on the table and you don't have them weighting down and dragging off. That won't help you sew in a straight line. Even if it means you have to put another table or a chair next to your sewing station, just so that you can keep the fabric on there and not have it weighting down. Right, let's look at those tools. Start by taking a look at your sewing machine. Now on the metal plates here, you should find that you have some markings. They may be in metric or in imperial, or you might be lucky enough to have them in both. On my machine, I have markings on both the right and on the left hand side of this metal plate but sometimes you only find them on the right hand side because that's where you're going to be using them most of the time. Now the key thing when it comes to sewing in a straight line is that you're going to want to use something as a guide for the edge of your fabric. Now you can by all means learn to use these lines and that is what I will use. I would simply line up the edge of my fabric with one of these lines. And the most important thing when you're sewing is that you don't look at the needle. When you're a beginner, it can be really tempting to look at this needle that's moving towards you and sort of being mesmerized by it. But you need to ignore the needle completely and you're watching the lines. And you really want to be watching them at the sort of start of the metal plate. If you watch them when you're in line with the needle, it is almost too late to get the fabric straightened up if you need to. So I'm watching them right here as I'm sewing. Now, when you're a beginner, you still might struggle with this and you may not have brilliant eyesight, so you might struggle with it anyway. So I want to share a couple of other tips you can use in order to keep your seams straight. Now, some machines either don't have any marks on the metal plate or perhaps you just find them difficult to see. One solution to this could be masking tape. Now I use this on my industrial and I'll just pop the masking tape down where I want to run the edge of the fabric next to. You're going to want to use a ruler to make sure that you measure from where the needle is to where you want the masking tape to be. What do you want your seam allowance to be? How far from the edge of the fabric do you want to sew? If you're using masking tape, I would recommend that you remove it after each use just to make sure that it doesn't leave a sticky residue on your machine. But that is why I recommend masking tape rather than um, other forms of sticky tape. If masking tape doesn't work for you, you could try one of these magnetic seam guides. They have a magnet on the base and all you need to do is to stick them onto the metal throat plate and you're just going to line it up the good thing about these is that they've got a little bit more depth, so depending on how thick your fabric is, you'll find that you can run it up against the edge of your seam guide. Let me show you how it works. I'm simply going to run my fabric right up to the edge of my seam guide. I'm looking at where the fabric is sitting in relation to the seam guide here. One thing you need to be careful of here is that you don't allow the fabric to sort of curl up against the edge of the magnet. You want to make sure that the fabric sits nice, flat and flush to the edge of the magnet. Some people do say that you shouldn't use these on computerized sewing machines. However, having looked on the Hemline, the brand that makes these website, they do say that it's far enough away from the computerized components. It's really up to you, just something to consider. Another tool that you might find useful is this. Now I received one of these with my sewing machine. You may have got one, you may not. And it's referred to as a seam guide. Now, depending on your machine, you can attach this into the back of the presser foot. To attach the seam guide onto the foot, you're simply going to need to unscrew this little screw on the back of the foot. There is a tiny little hole here. You're going to position the seam guide through the hole just like so, and then tighten up the screw so it's nice and tight and can't move. You may find that you have a seam guide like this one 
that you can use on the right of the presser foot. You may find that you also have one that you can use on the left of the presser foot. To position the seam guide onto this machine, there is a little hole or sort of groove in the back of this white plastic bit. It might be white plastic, it might be black plastic or even metal on your machine. And you simply need to push the seam guide through that area. This machine has a little metal plastic bit that you need to push the seam guide through instead. So do take a look at the area in which you need to push the seam guide through on your individual sewing machine. Once attached, you should again have a nice line to be able to feed the fabric against. I also use this when I'm quilting and perhaps I want to quilt a line the same distance away. I'll position this in and I will run the edge of my metal seam guide on the previous quilting line, knowing that I'm stitching the same distance apart. Another option is to not use a seam guide on the machine here, but to actually mark your stitching line onto your fabric with thread, pins, or perhaps some chalk. Let me show you how to do that. Now you might find it easier to simply draw the line that you want to stitch onto your fabric. This is useful if perhaps you want to stitch into the middle area of a piece of fabric and create a straight line, rather than have the ability to follow an edge or a seam that you've already sewn. In that case, I would take a ruler. You could either use a pen like this. This pen is air erasable and it comes off after time. You can also buy them that come off with water. The other option is some chalk. This is a chalk pen. The chalk comes out of the bottom here when I wheel it vertically, just so that you can see. So I've got an option to draw my straight line with chalk. I could draw it with a removable pen. Another option would be to actually pin on the line that you plan to sew. And I have some customers that like this technique. It is called pin basting. You would measure in from the edge where you wanted to sew, position the pins, and then you would just sew towards the pins, taking them out as you sewed. Further on from that, you could do a row of basting or tacking stitches where you want to sew, and you could stitch along this line. This is useful if you're wanting to hold two layers of fabric together, as is the pinning method. Really it's a case of having a go at all of these methods and deciding which method works best for you. If you're working on feeding a line, pins or your stitching line into the needle, you want to feed it right into the centre of the needle. You might have a little ridge in there, sometimes it's a little red marking, a little spot, something to follow to make sure that the needle is in the right place and you're stitching right on the line that you've drawn. The same applies if you're working with your basting or tacking threads, you're going to feed them right in to the centre of the needle. Now the next question you're probably going to have is what if you want to stitch really straight but close to the edge of fabric or a seam, perhaps an eighth or a quarter of an inch away, so three millimetres, five millimetres. We've covered what you would do if you could use your plate here or position something on the plate, which is great. But the minimum really that you can get away with is the edge of my fabric where it is right now, any less than that, and my fabric is no longer on the plate, so it can't help me. I could still draw or baste or tack a line of stitching here, but there are other ways that can make your life a little bit easier. Let's take a look. For example, we now have a little seam in this piece of fabric, and I want to sew really close to it. So how am I going to do that? Well, I could take a look at my presser foot here. Depending on the presser foot that you're working with, and if the one that's on your machine doesn't look like this, take a look through your box of other presser feet that you have or that you received with your machine. You want to find one that has got some edges that you can use. With this presser foot, I could position it down so that the seam runs into the inside of one of these legs. That would allow me to stitch about an eighth, perhaps a little bit larger, so three millimetres away. And all I would then do is, again, I wouldn't worry about the needle. I would simply worry about feeding the seam into the right place on the foot. Just like so. Now you may find that your machine provides you with the ability to move the needle. 
On my machine, I can move it to the left and the right, which would allow me to sew closer to the seam if I wanted to, or to sew further away from it. On your machine, you might not have this function, or you might, might find that it will just move to the left, or you might find that you just have two stitching options, straight stitch in the middle or straight stitch on the left or the right. This machine only has stitch A with the needle in the middle, stitch B with the needle on the left. You do not have the ability to move the needle other than these pre-selected stitches. Again, feel free to stitch with the needle in the left hand position if it's better for you and if you're able to stitch closer to the seam that you want to stitch. Feel free to have a play and stitch with the needle in the middle or on the left or on the right. It really depends on how close you want to stitch away from the seam or the edge of the fabric. As another example, this is the standard foot that comes with my Husqvarna. This foot has got an edge on either side here, but it's also got two smaller edges that I could use. So I think this is really great as a standard foot for the sewing machine because it means you have the option of sewing approximately a quarter of an inch, five millimeters away, or closer, say about an eighth, two to three millimeters. You may find that you can get hold of a foot similar to these if you don't have a foot with your sewing machine that makes stitching close to the edges or other seams easy. This foot is great if your machine does not have the ability to move the needle. On this machine, I only have the, the ability to move the needle to the left or to the center when I'm doing a straight stitch. So the little grooves that the foot has got really help me to sew closer to the seam or the edge of the fabric. Now I'm using the inside of this wide leg. I could move my fabric and now I'm using the inside of the smaller leg, sewing closer to the seam. Another foot that's really useful is an edge stitching foot. And this is an edge stitching foot that you can see here. It has got a sort of metal piece and what we're going to do is we're going to line this metal piece up with the seam and then you're going to move the needle to the left or the right so that you're stitching to the desired distance from that seam which is in line with this piece that you want to follow. I really rate the edge stitching foot and I do think it makes sewing close to seams much easier. Now, this does depend slightly on the ability to move the needle on your sewing machine. You've got a little bit of a bar or an edge of metal here. You're going to position this into the seam that you want to sew close to. I would then move my needle and I can move my needle on this machine to the right or to the left. So I would move it until I was happy with the placement would then allow me to sew really easily following this seam into that piece of metal. And really, you cannot go wrong. So an edge stitching foot is a good investment, but do just check that you have the ability to move your needle even just slightly so that you can use it to its full advantage. And you can see here that I've been able to sew a really nice distance away from that seam using the edge stitching foot. I really hope you find this video useful and that you've learned some tips with how to sew in a straight line and how to sew more accurately. Thanks for watching and see you soon.